Henry Thoreau adopted the use of an instrument called a hydrometer and, and the use of this instrument was later popularized by John Richardson in 1784. The hydrometer I'm talking about here is simply a large weighted glass bulb with a thin stem rising from the top with calibrated markings and so in this video we get to discuss the specifics that are relating to a hydrometer. Now right before us all we are seeing is what we call a common hydrometer. Now this common hydrometer, I'll start by describing the parts of this hydrometer. It comprises of a large glass bulb which I'm calling B. This large glass bulb B is known as the floating bulb and this floating bulb on top of it is what we call the graduated stem or just call it the stem S. So this stem here is graduated with markings. Uh, with 1.0 grams per cc, 0 0.69 and 1.69. This is the graduated stem I'm talking about. Now, of course, when you look at the bottom of the bulb right here, we have some spots right here. Those spots are what we call lead shots. And these lead shots are meant to keep this bulb upright when it is floating. In other words, if you look at this conical flask, if this is, the, this is what my hydrometer is, if I'm to drop this right here, you realize that it is going to be leaning against the walls of this conical flask. So now to make sure that this, this is uh, straight, it is when I drop it in, it is straight. Without it having to lean against the walls, I simply have to put those lead shots down. I put something heavy. Maybe for this case, since this is just a test tube, I put something heavy inside here inside there to make sure that when I drop this thing in water it stands up straight. So that's the lead of the, the use of the lead shots. The, the, the bottom of this bulb has very heavy lead shots and the use of these lead shots are specifically to make sure that this stem is kept upright. Now of course when you look at this stem at the midpoint we have one gram per cc and this is the density of pure water. So how does this thing work? This hydrometer, remember, we said that it can be used to test the purity of water. So it means that if I, ca if I get this and drop it in a liquid, this, I drop this bulb in a liquid like that, it will stand. Me, what I'll see is, I'll see how much of this has been submerged in the liquid where it has dropped. Now, in some cases, when you drop this in a liquid, it will sink so much that the level the amount of liquid that has, the, 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 the height that has submerged in a liquid has probably gone beyond. Maybe it is around here. And, maybe, and sometimes when you go and get this and drop it in a liquid that is a bit light, that is a bit thicker, you realize that uh, it might go below. The, the liquid level might be below. If I'm to put this in a liquid, sometimes... It will the water levels will stop there and sometimes depending on the liquid you might find that this thing will get dipped in and the water levels will go up there so what I'm trying to show here is that sometimes that the liquid levels will either be below this midpoint or above this midpoint depending on what liquid you have dropped it into now if the density of any liquid is less than one gram per cc it means that this bulb will sink more. But if the density of the liquid is more than one gram per cc, it means that the bulb will sink less in the liquid. That is why you're seeing that the divisions in the stem are going to start from the top with 0 0.69 and they gradually increase up to the bottom with 1.69. Now the graduations are not uniform. As you can see, they are not exactly uniform since the stem is also not uniform. So basically, this is the common hydrometer. And if you watch our previous sessions where we were discussing the, the simple hydrometer and all the illustrations with the conical flask and the test tube, it's exactly how this thing works. The thicker the liquid, the higher this thing floats. If the, and, 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 and that is how we're able to tell the relative density. Now, of course, this is the common hydrometer, but there are also different other special kinds of hydrometers. For example, 
we have what we call the lactometer. Now the lactometer is simply something that looks as simple as that. And this lactometer or this diagram as you can see it's representing a lactometer. For it it has a uniform stem and it is basically used to find the purity of milk. Now we all know that when we go to the farm we get milk from the cow when it is pure. And when this milk is got from the farm when in its purity some water is always added. Now the amount of water that you're going to add to the milk is going to determine the quality of that milk. Some people put in a lot of water, some people put in very little water. Of course, if you put in too much water in milk, it's going to become too dilute. It's going to vary very far, very much from its original quality. So the use of this lactometer is very simple. We use it to determine the purity of milk, how much water has been placed in the milk. Now we use this principle of relative density. When we add water to the milk, we increase its, we reduce its purity, or and so meaning that we are going to reduce the density of the milk. In other words, adding water to milk decreases the density of milk. And so it means that if it is going to decrease density of milk, if I drop this thing in milk, this, if the more I add water, the less the density, the deeper it sinks. It means that with, with this lactometer, if it sink, the deeper it sinks, the more water that has been added to the milk. So if you look at this term, it is graduated with an M here and W here. M in this case stands for pure milk and W up here stands for pure water. So between M and W represents the amount of water that has been added to the milk. So meaning that if I put water in the milk and then I drop this thing, or probably before I put water in the milk, when I drop this lactometer in milk, it is supposed to sink up to the point M. Uh, we, uh, the relative density of milk is about 1.03. So that is where it will sink. So when I add milk, the, when I add water to the milk, this lactometer is going to sink deeper. When it sinks deeper, that means that the level of the, the, the amount that has been, that is sinking in, if I'm to put this in milk, if it sinks deeper, it means that uh, at first it was here. Then I add water to the milk. When I add water to the milk, it moves to that level. When it moves to that level, level 3, it simply, uh, this level 3 represents that it is 75%. It has 75% concentration of milk. Then if I add more water, it means now it moves, uh, this lactometer dips deeper. This two represents that it is now 50% concentration of milk. And then this one represents that it is 25% concentration of milk. So this lactometer is simply nothing but a hydrometer who's with different graduations from W to M. And its main purpose really is just to determine the amount of water in milk. However, if this, the milk is skimmed, its density becomes higher and the apparatus therefore fails to detect its purity. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Ksembo Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.